I mean, I went back because I couldn't see them anywhere, and I went back and, and there was a sealed window, and there was no way they could. They were all over. They were into the loo. They were, the bodies were strewn all over the place. My earliest memory of going to the theatre is going to Chanakya Puri for Josh. Wide-eyed and absolutely invested in the big screen experience, I couldn't think of a better escape. And I'm sure most of the cinema enthusiasts who through their life experiences have fallen in love with that communal viewing experience felt the same way. The idea of feeling unsafe never crossed anyone's mind, for the gruesome circumstances would only happen to the fictional characters on the big screen. This is what the lawyer representing the families who lost their loved ones on 13 June 1997 in Upar cinemas in Green Park while watching Border wanted to make the council understand how gross negligence and absolute apathy from the owners led to the deaths of 59 people. What's also interesting is that a petition was filed by real estate magnate Sushil Ansal seeking a temporary halt to the streaming of this series, which was to be launched on January 13th. And thankfully, the High Court passed the judgment in Netflix's favour, refusing to halt the release. Based on real events, several accounts of the series are taken from Neelam and Shekhar Krishnamurti's written book, The Tragic Tale of the Upahar Fire Tragedy, a 25-year battle of parents wanting the rich and powerful to pay for their negligence and sins. A feeling unfathomable to parents is when their own kin leaves this world before them. And I can't even imagine the emotional impact this series may have had on parents as the series is not only compelling in its storytelling, but gut-wrenchingly painful. The cinematography by Ronal Hattimotar and Soumya Nanda Sahi immediately transports you to Delhi in the 90s. Everything from the clothes the characters wear, the hairstyles that are relevant, and the colour of the worn-out buildings. It not only transports you to another decade, but is technically exceptional. Trust me when I say this, that episodes 6 and 7 are marvels when it comes to staging, editing, and cinematography. We get introduced to the Krishnamurti family. While the father entertains the children playing video games, the mother runs helter-skelter from room to room, a common occurrence in most Indian households. You already understand the dynamic on who wears the pants in the house. Who is the good cop and who is the bad cop? But more than anything else, it represents a loving family that never envisioned the curveball life would throw at them. The series essentially is a slow burn, but this almost seems necessary to truly make you empathize and root for the cause of the main characters. The traumatic event is categorically shown in glimpses initially, the processing of death probably being the most heartbreaking element of the series in my eyes. The loss of a loved one hasn't fully sunk in, and one is subjected to clerical paperwork that needs to be done so that their final rites can be conducted. One hasn't shed a tear and is told to say goodbye forever. This especially emotionally impacts you while shedding light on the patriarch of the family who has lost seven family members in the fire. He is constantly reminded of his financial incapability to conduct the final rites of his loved ones, but the man can't help but look with an empty gaze at a distance, still in a daze of what transpired. This is also showcased through how the Krishnamurtis process death. Life and everything in their surroundings almost take the shape of something that they can't see or hear. Lost in their own thoughts, they are constantly alarmed by sudden noises like a doorbell or the telephone. Their flesh and blood passed away, but they were left with so many unanswered questions. Such lack of clarity or closure makes them uneasy, seeking for some form of peace through the justice system. An expression of empathy from others starts sounding like empty noise as the parents grieve. Rajshri Deshpande heartbreakingly looks at the footage of the tragedy. Abhi breaks down knowing that his children were trapped and suffered in their last moments. Processing grief also becomes so personal, each individual wanting to present that they are strong publicly, that they can go through the biggest waves of adversity but cry alone as they lock themselves in their bathroom. A day where the cinema hall turned into a crematorium. Those who lost their loved ones come together to fight the puppeteers. Those whose identity are cleverly not even showcased till the concluding episodes of the series. Faceless, powerful and influential men who are so empathetic of the tragedy that they never appear in court. In a career-defining performance, Rajshri Deshpande portrays a grieving mother, constantly on the lookout for answers to absolute perfection. Abhi Deol is extremely dependable as well. The loyal husband who falters along the way but also acknowledges and understands the reason why they embarked on this journey first. Even though I personally feel that the perspectives of Ashish Vidyarthi as the wheeler dealer of the powerful accused and Anupam Kher and Ratna Padakshah's track didn't really have the desired impact, it's admirable the perspectives and several timelines that they have knit together in a very clever screenplay written by Prashant Nair and Randeep Jha. The rich threaten, the common man suffers and this is especially true when the pursuit is the truth. The narrative hits home even further because it's a story of the late 90s but a legal battle that has carried on for more than 25 years. 
a character states noticing Neelam's persistence that this country easily forgets things and you've carried on the battle. The series juxtaposes brilliantly the polarizing emotions of one celebrating moving into a new apartment while the other sifts through the corpses being shifted out of the cinema hall. Shardul Bhardwaj and Rajesh Tailang appear in subplots, exploring their relationship to the tragedy and how it individually affected them, both putting forth stellar performances but Kiran Sharma especially stealing the show as a grieving wife, anxiety ridden because of the developments in her husband's life. Episode 6 of this show is editing and staging done at its finest, changing timelines and perspectives in single shots and sometimes with seamless editing that will make any cinema enthusiast jaw drop in disbelief. Trial by Fire easily becomes one of the most memorable and emotionally impactful series I've seen in years. I would easily put it in the same vicinity as the impact that the first season of Delhi Crime had on me. In a time period where streaming has taken a backseat while people are heading for the big screen experience, this is a series that will definitely stay with you for days, especially knowing the current predicament after such a long hard fought battle, something that you will see in the final frame of the series. I don't expect that there's going to be a blast in the cinema hall and the people aren't going to get out. They don't have exit. They don't have gangway. I don't know. I expect the government to do the job. When they give an NOC, they do the job. Yes, there's going to be all the provision of fire safety norms in the, in the cinema hall. I never expected that I send my children at 3 o'clock and get the dead body at 8.30.